Hi, and welcome to the show. A good society cultivates equality, fairness, and harmony often. Uh, this particular quote and statement makes sense on a number of different levels um, and this is true for um, everything else that we do say in this particular series of short conversations and statements and lectures and spoken words on the JC Foundation Trust. Uh, the first one being on the benefits of the red the diet, which is the relaxation exercise and diet method. Now, again here we have a similar pattern that makes use of a triad and the triad here says uh, that in order for us to have a good healthy society we need to cultivate three important factors and these are equality fairness and harmony if we look at equality uh, it, it is self-explanatory um, equality is not making any arbitrary dif uh, uh, distinctions between citizens in any given society and those distinctions are not based on anything else other than merit and skills and needs and contributions and so on and thus the whole society lives in harmony now where there is no equality between citizens because of the breakdown of those characteristics and the respect for those characteristics uh, that ensure equality between citizens and some of those characteristics are um, no distinction based on gender, no distinction based on religion, no distinction based on ethnicity, and no distinction based on disability, and so on and so forth. Uh, until the only differentiating factor, the, 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 the discrimination that is allowed, is on merit, uh, needs and contributions in any given society. Um, if, again, as we say, there is a breakdown of that particular equality in any given society, uh, that society becomes diseased because um, a small um, a small factor that has changed uh, in a society can have uh, magnified effects uh, that are multiplied many times and magnified to the point that they propagate and uh, the disease then becomes an epidemic whereby for instance discrimination is written in law it becomes the law of the land and therefore for instance it would be okay to discriminate against disabled people so everyone then will want to prove uh, that they are worthy citizens of that society and they will go above and beyond what is required of them and they will start to 
positively discriminate against disabled people to the point uh, that they want them excluded from the overall group of society and they want them ultimately no longer in existence and there we open the doors to genocide so we can see how we move logically from the personal to the group and societal level uh, by simply changing a few variables on the equation so therefore equality is written in law and therefore it is not only a legal requirement but a healthy hygienic requirement for any society worth its salt any society that wants to keep its members together now as we all know there is a slight difference uh, but not only a difference of semantics but also a difference in practicalities between equality and equity between equality and fairness so it is possible to have uh, equality but not uh, to have fairness available at that particular moment and the example of that would be um, uh, having a small child and a tall adult and supplying them um, with the same length chairs so that they can stand up and and look over a certain length window now um, if we are asked we would say well we are treating them equally by giving them exactly the same chairs and therefore we have done our, um, uh, we have done our, um, uh, our part and, and we have done our job and therefore uh, uh, we have satisfied equality yes but when both of them step up to the chair the tall adult will comfortably be able to look over the window however the small child will not reach the view because of his height and therefore we could say that even though our action was equal and equalized the chairs it was not fair and it was not equitable and therefore there are differences in, in fairness and we can go on to start to look at distributive justice and and perceived fairness and from whose point of view we are looking at fairness and so on but that would be for another another time and there will be further research required in this particular field but suffice to say on a simple surface level explanation that there is a slight difference between equality and equity that although one is present it doesn't necessarily mean that the other is present and therefore that we need to ensure that both of them are there and the difference between them now a society where citizens feel that they are treated unequally and they are treated unfairly would not be a very healthy or happy society unfair treatment would be for instance for the same job men and women are receiving different pay for the same labor we have a different reward and there is no other explanation other than discrimination that is unfair and it creates unfairness in society another example of unfairness in society is the differential between those at the top and those at the bottom and the only difference between the two is luck birth corruption um, 
uh, stealing, um, confidence tricks, and so on and so forth, or the general uh, uh, phenomena of what we call talent. A lot of the people explain the differential in terms of talent. And therefore, as a society, we ask ourselves, what are we prepared to allow for this talent between those at the top and those at the bottom? What are we um, allowing as a, as, as a bearable tolerance for that talent? A thousand times more from one wage to another? because someone has self-described and self-certified themselves as having talent or a board has self-certified itself as having talent can it be very independently verified and so on and so forth so what are we prepared to do ideally if we look again at equality and fairness we would want to reduce that differential to a bearable position. If we begin to just look at these two variables in terms of health of society, we would have gone a long way towards creating not the perfect society, because that is almost a utopia. And we are not dealing with utopias here or fantasies. We are dealing with possibilities, potential and realities. And we are looking at the extremes as well as the norms. And if we are embracing the extremes as well as the norms and moving together, and as a, as a conductor would move in a certain direction, we are really talking about one thing and one thing only that we wish for a society and that is for that society to live in harmony. Living in harmony it doesn't necessarily mean that we've achieved all the goals that we set out to achieve. It doesn't necessarily mean that we are at the ideal scene but we are getting closer. It simply means that we are now vibrating at a level in that particular society that says even the extremes are tolerable and even the norm is indistinguishable from the overall society. And if we achieve that aim, we have moved a little bit towards a healthier society.